I love Talisker and Log Villain. We've got some distillers additions with some different spins on these classics. Let's try these. Hey guys, welcome back to Whiskey on the West Coast. My name is Matt, and today we're continuing on our first impression sessions that we started with the Craig and Moore and Oban Distillers Editions Head to Heads. Um, and today we have Talisker 10 year old, the Talisker Distillers Edition 2022, as well as the Lagavulin 16 year old and the Lagavulin Distillers Edition 2022. Now, just like the previous video, which go check out if you haven't, um, these were part of a virtual tasting kit I purchased from Kensington Wine Market my favorite whiskey shop in all of Canada. Check them out if you're in Canada, even if you're from abroad, if you ever visit, you gotta check them out. Um, so I missed the virtual tasting. I'm catching up on it now. I wanted to bring you my thoughts on these whiskeys and these comparisons. So I'm not gonna be giving these a score, but I'm gonna compare the distillers editions to their original counterparts. Let's talk about Talisker. Talisker Distillery was founded in 1830 on the Isle of Skye. It's a Highland or Island um, region, single malt Scotch whiskey distillery. And it has a capacity of about 3.3 million liters per year, which is quite a lot. And one of the interesting facts that I know um, from Talisker's history is actually um, the owner of Talisker once sold Talisker to then go ahead and purchase the Macallan distillery. I don't know who made out better there. I mean, probably, probably the guy who purchased Macallan, let's be honest. Um, but another thing that I really find fascinating about Talisker is it has a little bit of a dark history behind it too. Um, Talisker is a, a clearance distillery, part of the Highland Clearances. And the, the workers who worked at Talisker at a certain point in time, they were paid uh, oftentimes in, in tokens, tokens that were used and could only be used at the, the the store on the island that was also owned by the person who owned the distillery and so they're being paid in a fashion that they could only actually spend that money or that currency out of the store that then helps going back into the coffers of the person who owns the distillery really kind of sick and twisted way to control people and it's almost like a form of indentured servitude there's a lot of interesting history around the highland clearance distilleries like klein leash um, and so I find it fascinating just because it gives us another look at the past and at the history that brought us these whiskeys. Um, now, Talisker 10 year old, it's 45.8% uh, ABV. I believe it's it's colored and it's chill filtered, but it has an extra bit of alcohol percentage to it. And I also really love the fact that um, it's a moderately or medium peated whiskey. They use 25% unpeated malt and they blend that in with 75% peated malt uh, to about 20, the 75% peated malt is about 20, 25 uh, phenol parts per million. Uh, and so it blends it down. It's probably closer to about 15 ppm or 17 and a half. If, I don't know, maths are hard. But um, really interesting that it's a blend of those two and it gives us this nice medium peat profile. Now the Talisker Distillers Edition 2022, again, 45.8% alcohol um, and it is uh, Amoroso Sherry finished. Um, it was first released in 1998, and unfortunately, like all the other Diageo Distillers Editions for 2022, they've removed the vintages off of these bottlings, so we can no longer know what year it was actually uh, distilled, uh, which is a shame, because as whiskey geeks and whiskey lovers, whiskey enthusiasts, um, we like to know everything we can about the whiskey. Let's move on to Talisker 10-year-old and give it a shot. Talisker 10 year old on the nose. And this is a classic. Oh man. It's wonderfully coastal. It has this like chili pepper um, spicing to it. <sighs> Wonderful peat smoke. Very coastal. Some licorice, sweet. Sweet vibes, sweet butterscotch, vanilla, and caramel. It's a certain like brininess to it though. Even though they actually ship all all or almost all of Talisker's distillate off of Sky. It, it's not aged on Sky, unfortunately. But it still has that that coastal vibe to it. A touch of like a seaweedy iodine 
Uh, nope. So sort of medicinal. Just like sweet fruits, like... Oh man. Maybe like barbecued fruits a little bit? Um, like if you were grilling some like pears and pineapple. Certainly the pineapple. I've at least had that one before. Hmm. Okay, let's compare that to the Distiller's Edition nose. So, the Talisker Distiller's Edition 2022. No vintage, because I'm bitter about that. Oh, way sweeter nose. None of the chili pepper spice. Super duper sweet. Um, yeah, I've had a lot of like uh, Pinot Noir finished uh, whiskeys that have this like, th this is a touch of it. This is a minor portion of it because it was just a finish, but just like a super uh, concentrated like caramel butterscotch vibe. Much less pepper, which some would be happy with. It's less coastal, still coastal, but less so. And the peat is, um, Definitely rounded out a bit. It's not as um, not as smoky, but the sweetness is oh man, it's inviting me to to sip already. Yeah, man, this nose is almost effervescent. It's it's jumping out. Um, it's bringing a bit of brightness to what was. Um, what was uh, already a very like earthy, almost like dark toned nose. Dried fruits, some like charred meats. Yeah, I really like this nose. Um, wow. All right, palette on the 10 year old. So it's sweet, medicinal peat, smoke punches in. Um, it's light to medium peating, it's nothing overwhelming. I really like a moderately peated whiskey. I think it's a great way to let the whole picture shine um, instead of being like more one or two note. Not to say that I don't love super duper heavily peated whiskeys. Uh, please reference my love of Octomore for that. But yeah, the chilies there, uh, chili pepper, sweetness, smoke, uh, medicinal vibes, caramel toffee, some like creme brulee sort of uh, thing going on. It's a little bit creamy too. Mm. Really enjoyable palette. It's a classic. The 45.8% alcohol really helps um, just the, the, the palette hit just right. And it, um, there's no indication that it's thin. Uh, I, I really, I, if they ever proof it down below the 45.8, um, we should revolt as a whiskey community. <laughs> oh, it's smoky finish, um, almost like cigarette ash, like just like an ashing butt. Um, I'm not a smoker, but sometimes it smells good to me. And like um, a black cracked pepper in there too. Yeah, it's such a classic classic whiskey talisker 10 really do uh, adore it all right the palette on the distillers edition 2022 sweet chili pepper leather there's the peat the peat smoke medicinal notes are still there um some dried fruits some raisin Earthy tones, definitely like prunes or like, um, oh man. Yeah, almost like a prunes or like fig spread sort of thing. Really nice palette. Yeah, that's great body on that. Wow. Everything I already said, it's, it's, I've said it before about another whiskey. It's a sweet peat treat. Um, it is, it's, it's awesome. 
I really like that palette. Um, smoke, leather, tobacco, um, coastal vibes. The medicinal note is on the finish as well. Oh man. And a bit of the wine. Mm. A bit of that sherry on the tail end here. Um, yeah, really nice resolve on the finish. I think this is a great take uh, and a, a nice um, breath of fresh air on the Talisker 10 year old. It's, um, there's a reason for it to exist because if you love Talisker 10 year old, I think this is a great spin on it that you're probably gonna love as well. So which one do I enjoy better on this night? Um, again, I'm not gonna give them ratings. I think the nose on the Talisker 10 year old is is more classic Talisker and just pops, very vibrant. I like the extra power uh, on it. And the fact that the, the peat is a little bit more noticeable, um, that helps it kind of pop uh, out of the glass uh, than the uh, nose on the Distiller's Edition. That was a little more rounded over, a little more subtle, a little more closed. Um, however, for palette, I just thought that the palette on the Distiller's Edition was a, a banger. It, it, it had everything I wanted and, uh, and more. I want to keep going back to that one over and over again. Not that I don't love the palette on the again. These are these are giants. They're they're good whiskeys uh, all around. But tonight that Distiller's Edition palette just it was the ticket for me. And on the finish, I found more on the finish with the Distiller's Edition. There was just more there, more to pick apart. It, there was more layers, and that finish on the uh, finishing the uh, Amoroso Sherry finish from the Distiller's Edition. I think it worked really well because it wasn't overbearing. It wasn't heavy handed with this whiskey. It accentuated what it was doing well without covering up what was already great about Talisker. So my winner here is going to be the Talisker Distillers Edition 2022. That's a great spin on the Talisker 10. Really enjoyed it. Moving on to Lagavulin and Distillery on the South Kildotten coast on Isla. Um, it is probably the most famous of the Isla distilleries. It was founded in 1816, just after uh, Lafroig in 1815, and has a capacity of 2.6 million liters uh, per year. In the 1990s, it was the best-selling single malt on Isla. However, uh, you know, stock issues reared their ugly heads, and as of 2020, it slipped all the way down to fourth place in sales behind Lafroig, Beaumore, and Ardbeg. Uh, Lagavulin 16 is just one of those whiskeys that has done a great job of being an ambassador for uh, smoky, heavily peated whiskeys um, to uh, those who are exploring the whiskey world. And it has definitely a uh, place in my heart. This whiskey though is uh, bottled at 43% alcohol. It is chill filtered, I believe, and it is colored. And you'll notice all these whiskeys have basically just about the same color. And I'll talk more about that uh, in kind of a wrap-up video uh, discussing the Diageo uh, Distillers Editions after this one. Um, now, the Lagavulin Distillers Edition 2022, again, no vintage, 43%, just like the Lagavulin 16-year-old, except for this has a Pedro Jimenez uh, finish on it. Um, it was introduced in 1998, just like the rest of these Distillers Editions. Um, and it is uh, definitely, it's a different take, but again, 43%, chill filtered, and colored, as far as I know. Lagavulin 16 year old, on the nose. This is sweet, Pete. It's coastal. Oh, it's wonderfully smoky and leathery. Oh man. Definitely think there's some sherry in this, though all, almost all uh, Lagavulin is filled directly into ex bourbon casks to start with. I feel like some of the casks are moved over to sherry and, and thrown into this as a vatting. It's just a really rich nose. It's just pure enjoyment in this nose, really. There's not much you could do to improve upon this. Other than maybe bottle at 46%, non-chill filtered, natural color. I don't know, just a hunch. 
Wow. Yeah. No, I enjoy that nose. Lagavulin makes quality distillate. Lagavulin Distillers Edition 2022 on the nose. Mmm. Jammy in comparison. Pedro Jimenez PX is just... It's such a sweet finish to throw on a whiskey. Yeah. Leather and fig spread. Like a mixed berry jam or like marmalade. The smoke is still there. Um, hasn't been covered up too, too much by that PX, at least on the nose. Yeah, it's, it's a rich nose, but feels a little more closed than the regular 16 year old. An interesting take on it though. If you're a Lagavulin 16 fan and you're used to that nose, you'll probably get a, a good kick out of the nose on that distiller's edition. All right, on the palate, Lagavulin 16 year old. Hmm. Oh man, it just explodes, just boom. Sweet, smoky, coastal peat. Um, it's a clean peat with still like a, a medicinal uh, tone to it though. And it's just everywhere, it's all over. Um, oh wow, it just coats your mouth. Um, oh, rich leather, tobacco, finish is smoky. Ooh. But it, it, it's smoky and earthy and it lingers. It's deep and it's dark and it's brooding. When I taste this whiskey, um, I don't always taste color, rarely do. But when I attribute a color to a whiskey, I like to say it out loud. Um, for me, Lagavulin 16 is purple. It's a purple whiskey. It's just like dark and brooding with that, uh, with that smoke. Um, but it still has that sherry impact. Um, man, I like this. Yeah, it's full bodied. There's no heat whatsoever. There's a really pleasant um, pepper spice on the back end here going to the finish. Just plumes of, of smoke. Again, it's that clean smoke, but with kind of a medicinal tone to it, medicinal edge. I hate that this whiskey is $185 Canadian. That's... That feels like a crime. <laughs> it's not. Um, it's their whiskey. They can charge what they want for it. it that, that just, damn. It's good. I can see why this is one of those whiskeys that turns people onto the concept of peated whiskey. Wow. The palette on the Distillers Edition 2022. Much brighter. Much brighter palette. It pops, red fruits, again, that kind of leather uh, note there. Super sweet, um, but still rich. Uh, it's grounded in that, that peat base, that smoke. Yeah, it, it's an energetic palette in that it, it just feels uh, more alive than the 16. Um, hmm. I think with this distiller's edition, the palette is just, it, it, it's all there. It's um, all surface level. Whereas the Lagavulin 16 year old palette is, um, has layers, has many layers and they unravel and unfurl as you drink. And which is true about any whiskey, but it just feels like there's more depth to that 16 in comparison to this distiller's edition right now. Cause it's, it's good, it's enjoyable but it, you pick up on it right away and it is what it is. On the finish, again, leather, tobacco, um, those sweet sherry notes. Um, still that clean peat uh, with the medicinal tones. Um, a lovely finish, they're both really good. I think there's more depth possibly in the palette and the finish on the 16 year old. Yeah, but this is a bright and lovely palette 
And I think it's something that, um, that is a nice, nice counterpunch to this original. So you might've already guessed where I'm going with this, but this is another unanimous decision for me on which is my preference tonight, whether it be the Lagavulin 16 year old single malt scotch whiskey, or whether it's the Lagavulin distillers edition 2022. My pick is gonna be the Lagavulin 16 year old. I think on the nose, it just is um, more put together on the palate. There's just more layers, more depth, and it just the way it plays out is just like it's it's a it's a symphony. It's it's wonderful, and the finish um, it really just hits home what it's already done really well. Yeah, obviously there's things I'd love to see with Lagavulin 16. I already mentioned the price. I mentioned bottling strength. I mentioned presenting it as uh, an integrity malt with uh, a color that hasn't had. Um, E150 caramel colorant added to it. It's still a classic. And it's part of the classic malts of Scotland for a reason, because it is that classic whiskey. I prefer the 12 cast strength. That's my preferred um, Lagavulin to be drinking. And Lagavulin 8 is a great value choice uh, if you can't shell out the nearly $200 Canadian it is now for the 16. My preference though, along with 16 year old over the Lagavulin Distillers Edition. 2022. While I'm not here necessarily to compare the Talisker's to the Lagavulin's, I just have to say on this evening for me, the Talisker Distillers Edition really hit home for me. That 2022 was fantastic. And um, after that, probably the Lagavulin 16 year old, the classic, those were my two favorites. Um, I want to talk more about the Lagavulin Distillers Edition kind of in a wrap up video. And so I'll hopefully bring that to you guys soon. Um, thank you for joining me on Whiskey on the West Coast. I do have a question for you, as always. My question, eh, it's a little bit of a softball, but if you had to pick one of Talisker 10-year-old for $125 Canadian or Lagavulin 16-year-old for $185 Canadian, which one are you spending your car a cold, hard cash on? Let me know which will be your poison in the comments down below. Thank you once again for tuning in. I appreciate it so much, guys. I appreciate all the comments. Please like, share, subscribe if you haven't already, and come back for more from the West Coast. Until next time, slunch.